Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, uh, going alone today with yet another user, or <clears throat> not user, viewer submitted set of beers here. So thank you so much, uh, guys, for, for doing that. It always is really awesome to get to try beers that are meaningful to you guys, to have them send them to me. And uh, this one was actually given to me uh, by hand, hand delivered uh, by Jason. And he said that this uh, brewery, which is uh, Four Peaks out of Tempe, Arizona, is the reason he got into beer. So uh, he felt that this was the most meaningful brewery to him. He would love to know what I thought about them and to share it with the rest of the world. So thank you so much, Jason. Always appreciate that. Um, I was doing just a little bit of research on uh, Four Peaks Brewing. I like to do that before I just go into a beer blind. Um, on one hand, I don't want to look at any reviews or any ratings. Um, I really try to not do that at all. I, I just want to kind of go in so uh, as blind um, as I possibly can. Sometimes that's impossible with you know a really, really well-known beer. But for some smaller regional breweries, that's kind of easy. So I looked up the story on these guys. Uh, they have a really uh, cool website although it is a little buggy. So some pages just load up as blank, but you gotta kinda click around and, and figure it out. But they have a really cool blog. <clears throat> Um, I really kind of like the message. Uh, they were pretty um, pro kind of feminist. That's guy brewers, but you know they were had several posts about how um, you know the bikini-clad women uh, shouldn't be used to sell beer, and that more women would like beer if that wasn't always what was associated with selling beer, which is something I hadn't really thought about before, but was pretty cool. Um, they also do a lot about the same things that I talk about on the show all the time. You know, how to store beer, cans versus bottles, how to taste beer, how to appreciate beer, histories of different styles, which always gets me, you know, that's kind of one of my geekier points. So I really like that. And I have uh, two beers here. I think both of these at one point have won medals, uh, I believe bronze medals at the GABF. So that's also really cool as well. And I've got their Hop Not IPA and their Kilt Lifter, which is, surprise, surprise, their Scottish Ale, their Scottish Export. So my guess would be that's like a 90 shilling, kind of the middle uh, guy, the, the stronger Scottish before it becomes a Scotch. Could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, though. So we'll start there with the uh, Kilt Lifter Scottish style ale. Uh, picture of a kilt, mm, I guess, sort of blowing in the breeze. <clears throat> so, like I said, whoa. All right, I just got beer blasted all over my face. So, yeah, don't shake up your cans before you uh, put them on the shelf. So, um, no idea as to the age of these. I'm trying to see if there's any sort of indications on the can. Uh, oh, there is, isn't there? Huh. One, one, two, six. So, my guess is it's maybe um, within two months old if, um, uh, oh wait, one, one, two, six. I don't know. I don't want to say, I don't know what they're what their uh, method for brewing or um, dating their cans is. Um, in fact, you know what? Let me go see if I can look that up real quick. I'll be right back. <sighs> Man, I'm really having a trend of stopping and starting during these shows. I'll try to get away from that. I like to do one continuous uh, take. Um, anyway, uh, try to look up some of their can canning info. They do provide it, so yay to f uh, Four Peaks, but it's only on their cartons, 12 packs and six packs, not actually on their cans. Um, <clears throat> so there is a code, but it's like a brewery only code that they need some reference cards to look up. So don't know how old it is, but there you go. Also don't know the price on these things, and I don't know the availability. I just know you can't get it in Chicago. I think it's pretty small, it's a pretty small brewery. So Scottish Ale, what you're gonna typically look for is malt-driven beer, low in hop character, uh, mainly because historically, you know, hops aren't grown in Scotland uh, and they'd have to buy them from the English and they weren't really keen on uh, interacting with the English too much. So you're gonna have malt-driven beers, cleaner because they're typically fermented at colder temperatures because historically it's a little bit colder in uh, Scotland. So it's almost uh, not lager, but lager-like, we'll say. Low in esters, clean ales, a little bit of uh, esters, but low, um, and malt-driven. And that's definitely what I'm getting here. I mean, the classic Scottish um, ale. Uh, it's a little bit heavier. Um, my guess is that it's, um, 
a little bit higher in alcohol, yeah, 6%, so not too shabby, but you know, not a, a weakling, not a lightweight either. Nice grainy um, depth of malt, um, a little bit of caramel and toffee in there. A little bit of like honey biscuit. But you, you get what I'm going. Um, not a ton of fruit, just really clean, clean malt. Nice. This is their flagship beer, and it's really nice. It's it's got that, I'd say, biscuity, uh, biscuity caramel, uh, easy drinking, um, pretty soft mouth feel, uh, semi you know full. I'd say. Very very low bitterness, just enough to keep kind of the any sweetness from being too cloying. Um, and it goes down easy. Uh, I gotta say, I like this beer. <clears throat> um, um, what else am I getting on here? Let me just try to think real quick. Um, it's kind of hard to take two sips and then describe a beer. A lot of times you need to have a whole can, in this case, or a whole glass, and you kind of, you know, it changes over time. Uh, and this, you know, it is just kind of my knee-jerk um, reactions to it. Yeah, but it's nice, you know, malt-driven beer with uh, good caramel biscuit notes. I mean, I think I kind of nailed it. it. Reminds me a little bit of like a toasted biscuit, a little bit of honey that's been kind of sitting in there, seeping into it, um, and and really just kind of in, ingrained into the biscuit. Um, really nice. I'm gonna go um, 91 with this beer. I think it's pretty darn solid. I like it. Okay. I'm gonna open this one over here, not over the remote control, but maybe over this, and slow. Okay, a little bit of foaming on this one too. Um, <clears throat> I promise I didn't jiggle these around at all. Um, <clears throat> this is the Hop Knot IPA. This is their American style IPA. They also have an English style IPA, which is, is kind of cool that they do both. Um, American style IPAs are one going to take advantage of uh, English. I mean, sorry, American IPAs are going to take advantage of American style hops, and uh, they're also tend to be a bigger, uh, a little bit more aggressively hopped, a little bit more exaggerated version of the English style. You know, in America, we like everything bigger and bigger, and that's kind of what American IPA is. I think this just recently also won a GABF medal, uh, bronze for strong pale ale. You know, they call it an IPA. And there's so many like granular levels of of hop, um, the hop of, of beer styles these days. You get the idea. IPA, strong pale ale. What are you gonna do? So uh, clearly an unfiltered uh, beer. I wonder if it's canned from um, conditioned, uh, meaning that they you know leave some yeast in there and allow it to condition. Again, I don't know how old it is, and that's quite important for uh, an IPA. So you know, if possible, always check and see that you're drinking beer that is fresh. I'd certainly say within 90 days for an IPA. Ideally within 60 or maybe even 30 if you can get it. Um, and uh, but it's nice. It's like kind of a, a, a hazy straw yellow, uh, just a little bit of head on there. Um, yeah, so tons of that earthy, woody hop <clears throat> varietals. Maybe like uh, Will Amet, something like that. Um, kind of like New World versions of English style hops, which is kind of interesting. Not the big citrusy or tropical uh, hops that a lot of people are using nowadays. Or, you know, some of the pine, but really more of like a barky, woody, resinous hop. But still, in a way, bright, because I feel. A lot of times when you use a lot of those woody hops, they can just really kind of muddle and bring down the overall body and make it feel like you're drinking a pretty, you know, heavy, substantial beer, which is fine at times. But this smells still kind of bright. A little bit of like a vegetative, uh, vegetal uh, component as well. And some, you know, mild, um, like orange, orange marmalade uh, as well. Yeah, uh, marmalade. 
Okay, light-bodied beer, definitely uh, just enough malt. Well, no, I mean, there, there's some malt there to kind of balance out the hops, but it is, you know, the hops are what is the showcase here. And it is that really woody, um, really water, woody, not cedary, but kind of getting into like cedar, um, kind of big pungent um, hop character. And then very little, um, a kind of mid palate and then you or no, a nice mid palate then you drink it and then the malt just kind of drops away it's entirely clean and you've just got your mouth filled with a really really hoppy um uh, it's like an aroma it's just kind of this thing floating around in your mouth it's not necessarily on your tongue but your mouth is filled filled with these like hoppy flavors and aromatics it's an interesting uh a, a beer in that it's kind of uh, it comes in big with more malt than I would typically expect for a beer that kind of drops off and finishes so clean. And definitely woody. I'm getting a little bit more pine on the tongue as well. And then, man, that beer just drops off. Um, somewhat bitter. My guess would be if I drank this whole can, that bitterness would slowly kind of creep up on you as bitterness tends to do. Um, but again, a nice easy drinking beer. I wonder what this is. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a little bit higher in alcohol as well. Yeah, 6.7. So even higher. It's a pretty big IPA and it hides the booze pretty well. I just got the feeling that there was some some booze there. Um, just in, I don't know, the in, in the body. Although it is, you know, quite dry. Um, but yeah, if you guys are into that piney resinous style hop and you're uh, you know, in the Southwest and have the opportunity to pick up some of the uh, Four Peak stuff, hop knot's a good way to go. I'm gonna try uh, you know, a third little sip here. Uh, more than just a sip, I guess. Um, yeah. Be curious what uh, hops they used here. So, Jason, if you know, drop a comment. Let us all know what they used. I guess it's like maybe Galena, Willamette, something like that. Maybe some Simcoe. Um, that's really it. I, I like this beer. Uh, I'm going to go 92. I like it a little bit more than the Kill Lifter. I think these are really solid beers. Thanks, Jason, for sending these uh, to me. Um, really appreciate it. And these are definitely both going down. They're going to get drunk. And uh, that's really about it. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to leave a rating or review on iTunes. If you do watch this show, I really appreciate if you would do that. It's always awesome to see that and it helps. Um, so many people have said that they've done searches on iTunes and they've po uh, seen the Beer Temple pop up and then that's how they've found it. And that really is tied into the ratings and reviews. So if you do feel that this is a show that uh, you think other people would like, uh, just go on and, and click on a rating. Uh, a review is awesome. You know, it takes a little bit more time. Um, so, you know, if you can only do a rating, I, I uh, understand that. But enough shilling for me. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I've, well, I, I almost just kind of stumbled into my own ending. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say, I've got some great beers to go drink, uh, which I do, and hopefully you do too. Thanks, guys.